I want to invite to the stage Dr. Kai Fischer. He's coming here from Germany, uh, also acting in Zurich, and with his practice in uh, Now Don't Kill Me, I'm in Germany, is Würzburg. Uh, I let him introduce himself later with the right pronunciation. So, Dr. Kai Fischer will talk about the experience with the IXL performance system. And, um, you know, I don't know if you noticed, but I changed something on me. I put some red lipstick. Did you notice that? So, I, I would stay tuned in the lecture of Dr. Kai. You, you understand why I did this move. The stage is yours, Kai. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you for the very kind introduction. So, you know, um, now the challenge of explaining why you're actually wearing lipstick is on. Um, so, we met last Wednesday, so uh, I, I will try to clarify why wearing lipstick is actually a good thing. Or, let's say, having some spare red lipsticks in the practice is, is, is worth the investment. So, I have the pleasure also to introduce to you the, the IXL implant system, um, so the new performance implant family of Strauma. So, but before we are starting with placing implants, I just want to make you a little bit intrigued and also reading some, some scientific paper every now and then. And some of my colleagues from Switzerland, from Zurich University, they used artificial intelligence in a different way than we saw beforehand. So what they did, they actually took um, female dental students and asked them uh, to participate in that study. And you know, dental students usually are the perfect participants for these kind of clinical investigations because they still need to do their exams. So they always volunteer um, very easily. So what the colleagues did, they took different kind of pictures with perfectly aligned teeth and misaligned teeth. And then they also took the same pictures with earrings, with uh, glasses, and with red lipsticks. And then they asked artificial intelligence to judge on an objective way the aesthetic appearance of these ladies. And the funny thing, and that, that's very easy to see, is that if you compare these two pictures only based on the dentition, you would rate this one more aesthetically appearing, right? But as soon as you give this lady red lipstick, artificial intelligence is going to give both pictures the same score. So whenever you miss the perfect result in dental practice, maybe, so you're missing a little bit of the papilla, or maybe the, the lab technician didn't do the 100% job, just get some red lipstick and everything will be fine. So just a short introduction um, about myself. I'm also a periodontist. I just recently opened my private practice in Würzburg, Germany, which is a two and a half hour drive from Cologne. And why am I actually presenting the topic of IXL implants uh, family? Because now I'm primarily working with referral cases. So when you're doing referrals as a surgeon, you want to have some freedom in choosing the right implant for your patient, but you also want to make life very easy for the referring dentist to restore it at the end. Also, I'm still based uh, or affiliated to the University of Zurich, and I'm using Strauman implants now for more than 12 years. So when I started using um, Strauman implants, I had some difficulties uh, with implant placement because I was used to tapered implants, and at the time, they were still all um, parallel wall implants. So I was really happy when, in 2015, the BLT implant uh, got introduced, and this is still one of the major products of the company. But a couple of years later, more exciting implant designs and also internal connections appeared. So nowadays, what we are talking about is the BLX, the TLX, BLC, and TLC family. So this is the new IXL family. So what is really exciting about IXL? So the exciting part is that by using this implant family, you have the surgical flexibility of different macro designs of the implant, but still you have a versatile yet straightforward um, connection and choice when it comes to the prosthetic restoration. So what is so unique about that implant family is that you have only one surgical instrument kit. So that might 
makes life as a referral practice very easy because I only need one surgical kit. Instead of having multiple instrument kits, um, you always have to have backup kits. So only having one surgical kit for all these different implant designs makes life way easier in practice and especially for our dental nurses and our dental assistants. So they love it that whenever I'm saying I'm going to place trauma today, they exactly know which system I'm going to use and which surgical kit they're going to open. We have four different implant designs. So we have bone level implants, we have tissue level implants. So depending on the case you're going to treat, if it's an immediate case or if it's a stage approach, you can decide which kind of macro design you're going to use. And for your um, prosthodontist or for your referring dentist, it's also very simple because he's got only one prosthetic connection. So he's only going to need uh, a, a smaller set of healing abutments. He's only going to use a smaller set of scanning abutments or impression copings. So also stock components in the practice is going to be less than having multiple different internal connections. So it's a win-win situation for you as a surgeon, for your nurses, for your, uh, for your lab technician, and also for the prosthodontist. So looking at the differences between the two different implant um, systems, we have the C line. So that's more the conservative, maybe, um, design. And we also have the X line, the BLX, which is now uh, more famous, maybe. So what are the major differences? So when we look at the C line, the maximum diameter of this implant is located at the implant neck. So that immediately shows you that the preparation may be or the osteotomy is going to be different. While on the BLX, the widest diameter is going to be on the threads. So you know that neck is going to be more narrow than the threads. This might be important when you're placing implants in the posterior uh, maxilla when you only have a uh, small re um, remaining jaw height. Also, what is going to place into your hands, if we're talking about anterior zone, where you want to maintain as much bone as possible, we have a reduced shoulder width in the X line. So if you're an experienced or an unexperienced surgeon, or you're placing the first implants, these two implants totally behave in a different way when you're seating the implant. So while the C line is precisely going to follow, you, follow this osteotomy you have prepared. So you more or less can close your eyes while placing the implant because it's going to move where you plant it. You really have to maintain your um, the observation of the BLX implant because it can move itself. So it's self-guiding, it's self-cutting. So you still can change the angulation, you still can change the position very easily and if you maybe are unaware a second or something, also the cortical bone can lead you in a different direction. The narrowest point is in the apex, and also we have deep threads here in the apical part to achieve high primary stability. So if you look now at the range of diameters, and I didn't have a picture of the length because you also have varying lengths of the implants, um, this is now the full set. We need to add also the tissue level implants, but in my practice, I completely focus on using bone level implants. Um, the major difference here is that with the BLC, we have a smaller selection of implant diameters, but at the end of the day, this is more than sufficient. Okay, so usually I would say I'm placing implants um, between the 3.75 to 4.5 on a daily basis, um, and that's the major, major diameters I'm using right now. So, um, as a periodontist, this is the set of implants I'm using in the practice. So whenever I'm placing immediate implants, I opt for the BLX system between the 3.5 to 4.0 implant system because I'm primarily using this in the anterior zone or the premolar zone. And when I have a healed ridge or I have to replace um, molars, then I'm going to opt for the um, BLC implant line. So when we are talking about the connection, um, you see that Independent of the diameter, independent of the design, they all have one internal connection, the torque connection. So this makes life much easier when it comes to stock components. And the interesting thing also is that they all have one emergence profile in common. And what you just saw as well with the aha moments, um, also 
the anatomical healing abutment shares the same emergence profile. And we are also going to talk about that later on. So let me share one uh, of the cases. So in this young patient, we needed to extract uh, one of the central incisors, so the upper right central incisor. Uh, that's a typical um, extraction um, case where you had like trauma in childhood, then endodontic treatment, first crown, second endodontic treatment, apicoectomy, and then a root fracture. So we needed to take out um, the central incisor. When I'm assessing these cases, I always ask the patient if he's happy or not with his smile. So depending on um, crown shape, and in this case, he's a rather tall and slender patient. So I thought that looking at the central incisor, this is a more quadratic kind of tooth shape, so which um, tooth shape was not appropriate for him. So we decided at the end to also do some crown lengthening. So this is something you ideally can pl plan with Smile Cloud as well. So then extraction of the tooth with an open approach because we are going to regenerate the buccal bone. So extraction of the tooth, um, missing buccal bone wall, but still we have a lot of bone in the apical part, so we can proceed with immediate implant placement using a pilot guide, placing the implant three to four millimeter below the future gingival margin. So now it looks really, really deep. But if you now think about that the future crown is going to be located up to here, the implant neck is three to four millimeter below the future gingival margin. Yeah? If you would have placed this implant without opening, it actually looks really, really deep. So now you take your intraoral scanner, um, scan the implant position to be able to fabricate a provisional for the second stage surgery. Bone grafting only within the bony housing. I don't over augment nowadays because I think that over augmenting actually um, help, um, introduces more shrinkage of the regeneration, covering everything with a collagen membrane. So this is a pericardium membrane. And then primary closure with the help of a connective tissue graft. So if you're a patient from a periodontist, usually you're always going to get a, a connective tissue graft at some stage of your treatment. Then we just wait for the bone healing, we wait for the integration of the implant, and during second stage surgery I did perform the crown lengthening procedure while also doing the uncovering, placing the prefabricated provisional um, healing just one week later, and then we just wait for the tissue maturation, that's the situation three months after implant placement, and that's the emergence profile um, the prostodontist is now going to work with. So that's the stage when I refer the patient back to the prostodontist and he's going to finalize the case. Um, that was the initial situation and the final result uh, with the crown lengthening and the final restoration on the center incisor. But what's even more important for me as the surgeon is how stable is going to be the bone. So bone stability is excellent with the new internal connection. So torque fit is a very tight um, connection. So you see that we started with zero buckle bone and um, five years later we still have three millimeter horizontal bone with um, buckle to the implant. So let me also share a case where I used the sea line. So you see we already extracted another center incisor. The patient underwent other uh, rich preservation, so we didn't decide to go for immediate implant placement because the bone defect actually reached the nasal floor. So there was no bone to anchor the implant. So we decided to go for uh, a two-stage approach. So this is the situation after flap reflection. You see the newly regenerated bone in the apical part. It's more than sufficient to place the implant. But now, as we have a real ridge, I don't really need the high primary stability or the deep threads of the implant. So we're going to place the BLC implant here. Um, Again, three to four millimeter below the future gingival margin. Then do some bone augmentation of the residual bone defect. Um, covering everything with a collagen membrane, also using some hyaluronic acid. And then primary closure and putting back the Maryland bridge to wait for the final healing of the bone defect and implant integration. So 
let me just summarize everything. So why should you consider changing uh, to the IXL implant family? Why does it make sense for you? So first of all, um, it's less components with more versatility. So you only have one surgical kit, you can place four different kind of implants, and you only have one connection. This means that you have more treatment options with less components. Um, now you have one implant family for all clinical scenarios, whether you're going for immediate implant placement, immediate loading, or you're going to go for a stage focal augmentation approach, and you're going to place a tissue-level implant. And the IXL family is going to be the core of all future digital innovations. So by that, I want to thank you for your kind attention and hope you really enjoyed the presentation. Thank you. <laughs>